How's it going y'all? Devin here from Tactical Cowboy. We're here to talk to you about some interesting topics. Do you put your backup sights on top of your scope or off to the side canted at a 45 degree angle? So my personal opinion is I like them on top of the scope for a couple of different reasons I'm going to explain to you. Go ahead, comment below which one you prefer and why. Maybe pause it, look through the comments, get all the opinions, see which ones you like, which ones you don't like, then see what I have to say about it. All right, resume the video. Boom, super cool. All right, so why do I like a dot on top versus canted on the side or irons or whatever? I like this because the main reason I can keep the rifle shouldered in my position that's extremely consistent. Nothing ever changes, right? So for example, check this out. I'm on, I'm on my optic right here, the super sexy Razor 1 to 10 that Tommy let us use for this. Bam, 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 bam. Oh no, I need to use my dot. Look at that, it's right there. Nothing changes about the position of my body, all that kind of stuff, I just do that. Super simple, right? Another benefit of this is if I'm using night vision, same rifle position, just instead of getting on the optic, head up, super, super easy, super, super easy. Now, if I take this bad boy, now this is a badass rifle right here, Culper Precision Sierra, highly recommend this guy. Me and Braden were out here the other day nailing three inch poppers at 800. This is just a 5.56 with some of that AAC ammo. All right, so, Right now, I'm in my scope, right? Bam, 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 I'm a badass. All right, now let me transition to these irons. Still not low enough. There we go. I have to transition, and notice how the shoulder pocket is different, right? Now I've got the stock over here on the anterior deltoid versus normally, I've got the stock straight up and down and my anterior deltoid is hugging. So that's gonna change my recoil pattern pretty significantly. So you might be wondering, oh, well, it's only a little bit of change and that's only for close up and blah, 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 blah. Maybe, maybe, but we want to be as good a marksman as possible, right? What if you're in a hostage rescue scenario? What if you need to take a well-placed shot? What if this breaks and this is your only solution now and you might have to shoot 200 yards? Well, I'm going to want something that's going to be consistent, right? Another thing is that's my pet peeve about this, this uh, what would you say, this discussion is zeroing right so i feel very confident i can zero this quite consistently because i can at least ensure with a bubble level my rifle and scope is level therefore i'm in a good shooting position raise my head up send rounds and i'm good to go we've gotten some pretty good groupings out of this where if i had a red dot over here with the irons as well as the same case if i had that now i have to try to first think okay what is the exact angle that I'm at when the rifle's shoulder? On top of that, I have to try to replicate it when I zero, which is very difficult, right? Because the rifle's gonna move a little bit. Now, what are you gonna do? Set up bags so it's like in a perfect cant? I don't know. You could, but most guys I know, they just stand there in zero to 25, and they're like, oh, I'm good. But like I said, what about 50, 100, 200? You might have to do that. Another consideration is the kneeling, right? And the prone, obviously, but the kneeling for sure. If I have to get behind this rifle, bang, bang, bang. If this breaks, or I have to use night vision or something. All I have to do is raise my head up, have a red dot right here, send it, and I'm killing it. I've got my awesome positions, my heart on soft, good contact with the rifle, all that. What happens when I have an offset? And I have to do some shit like this and try to scrunch down behind it. It's going to change my shooting position completely. And it's not ideal, not ideal. I'm not even gonna get on the ground, but you get the idea with the prone, right? Imagine trying to shoot like this in the prone. We see people do it and it looks like shit. <laughs> they look like a soup sandwich. You don't wanna be a soup sandwich. All right, so talked about night vision use, talked about positional shooting. Oh, if you need to go offhand, which I wouldn't recommend in a close quarters environment, but if you're using barriers, really trying to stay covered and concealed, I might be a fan of it because you can build a pretty decent shooting position offhand. This is easy. All you got to do is instead of being in your scope, raise your head up and you're good to go, right? Now with this, what am I going to do offhand? I'm screwed completely. Unless I'm going to go offhand then have the stock contorted in this direction. That sounds like a nightmare to me, right? So another thing that Blake brought up is these are scopes with a red dot or iron tats backing them up. What about a red dot backing up a red dot? like the Veil Solutions guy, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Personally, on my rifle with the EOTech, I don't have backup sights on it. But if I did, I'd probably use a red dot. 
just because why not, right? I mean, there's a reason why everybody's getting red dots in their pistol now, right? And why is that? You can comment below, but it's because they're better. You don't see anybody running around, any professional running around with iron sights on their rifle as their primary. Why? Because they're not nearly as good as this, as this, as this. It's just plain and simple. Stay target focused, all that kind of stuff. So, if your main red dot goes down, which could happen, like an EOTech, it breaks somehow, whatever, whatever, whatever sight you got, right? If that goes down and you've got irons as the backup, I mean, if you're going to do that, why not as well just do a red dot, right? I guess kind of thinking deeper on it, that's where I'm at with that one, Blake. I don't know. Irons right? fail like, too, right? Irons fail too. Irons fail too. Even on your freaking pistol. We've seen the front sight fall out. We've seen the rear sight back out. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. So that's what I got for you guys on where to put your backup sights. Where to put them. Where to put them. I'd put them on top. Also, it helps you follow rule number one, which is what? Always look cool. And I think this looks a lot cooler than this. I don't know. What do you think, Blake? I agree. <laughs> Agree. All right, that's all we got for you guys. Drop a comment below, subscribe, share, talk some crap, all that. Have a good one. How's it going, y'all? Devin here from Tactical Cowboy, and I got Coda. He's our tactical mascot. Always go with the lab. Always go with the lab. They're the best dogs. Get out of here, bud. Oh, he's vlogging us. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I want to say thank you so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. If you guys would like to, please subscribe to the channel. Why do I say that? Because it helps support us, right? We're growing and growing and growing and growing, and we're bringing all the best training to you guys. So, oh, dog butt, dog butt. <laughs> we're bringing all the best training to you guys. So, the more subscribers we got, the better it helps. Also, like the video, comment on it, comment about how cute Coda is, comment about how noisy Isaac is, comment about my teeth, whatever. And that, that's it. Thank you so much for the support. Have a good one.